Hi and welcome to Fun Swedish. We received so many comments from people who said that they start learning Swedish thanks to the Netflix series Young Royals. If that is you, then this is the perfect video for you because we will teach you Swedish while we explore 10 fun facts about Young Royals and Sweden. Plus, I also have a soft spot for high school movies and series, so I really enjoyed making this video for you. If you haven't watched Young Royals yet, spoiler alert, but also give it a try. Doing something you find fun and that you can do for hours, like watching a Netflix show, can be a great way of training your ear and learning Swedish. Okay, now let's get started. Number one, the school. Is it real? Again, for some context, if you haven't watched it yet. Young Royals is a series about the students attending an internat skola, a boarding school in Sweden called Hillerska, and a lot of drama around them. One of those students is Prinsen Wilhelm, the prince of the Swedish throne. Right here we can say there is no Swedish internat skola called Hillerska in real life. However, there was one called Hilska in the 1800s. Also, what is true is that just like Wilhelm, our current prince, Carl Philip, also attended an elite internat skola in Sweden. His school was called Lundberg and it has a lot of similarities with the boarding school Hillerska in Young Royals. For example, both are prestigious schools where the students are trained to become powerful leaders. And these schools often have rituals and traditions, which leads us to our next point. Number two. Nollning. Nollning as a word comes from the word noll, which is how we say zero in Swedish. A nollning is sort of an initiation ritual, like some fraternities in the US do. Some form of party or test to welcome the new students, which often ends up in some form of humiliation towards the newcomers, which are the nollor in this case. This happens at some universities and gymnasium, which is the Swedish word for high school. Like in the show, we see a pretty disgusting nollning. Back to the actual prince, Carl Philip. Of course, there's no official record of him doing or participating in a nollning. But Lundsberg, the boarding school he attended, is pretty known for the nollning. So I would suspect that he went through some kind of nollning. How famous are the nollning at Lundsbergs? Well, the school was even closed for a while by Skolinspektionen, the Swedish school inspectorate. And it was because the nollning they were doing there went way out of control, as you can see in this article. I januari 2014 dömdes två elever för vållande till kroppsskada. Sedan de bränd en elev med strykjärn vid en nollning. In January 2014, two students were sentenced for causing serious injuries to another student, having burned them with an iron. Moving on, number three, struggling to read. Another thing that is also probably based on the reality is that the character Wilhelm sometimes struggles to do public speeches. In reality, our current prince, Carl Philip has admitted that he had a hard time at Lundsberg, mainly due to his dyslexia, which is the Swedish word for dyslexia, which made it really difficult for him to talk in front of other people. Number four, romance. Another thing that young royals might have in common with the real Swedish royals is forbidden love stories, in particular gay romances. It is said that we had a king Gustav V, the great granddad of our current king, had several secret relationships with other men. The most famous one was together with a restaurant owner called Kurt Heiby. Last year, a Swedish series was made about the romance, called En Kunglig Affär, a royal affair. However, whether this is true or not has never really been confirmed by the Swedish royal house. So it could be that the character Wilhelm is not just inspired by Carl Philip, but a mix of quite a few stories of different members of the royal family put together. Number five, the accent. Some people have asked if the characters of young royals has a posh Swedish accent. And I guess it depends 
who you ask. Those who are not from Stockholm might say that they do speak in a posh accent. But since I'm from Stockholm, I would say that they kind of have this regular Swedish accent. If I had to think how the really posh people talk, those who go to these internat skolor, it wouldn't really sound like this. Though the character Felice might be the closest to sound like them. And since we brought up the name Felice, let's talk about the names of the characters and the actors in proper Swedish. Sure, you can say that the main character's name is William or maybe Wilhelm, but for those of you who want to sound super Swedish, when you talk about the show, then this is how you should say it. We have Wilhelm, the prince, who is played by Edvin Rydberg. My name's Edvin and I play Wilhelm. Notice that it's not Edwin, no, it's Edvin. Edwin. The Swedish E sound is very important. Then we have Simon. Yes, not Simon. Simon. That's how we say the name in Swedish. That annoying nasal Swedish E. Simon. Played by Omar Rudberg. Notice here that the end of his name, Berg, is how we say mountain. But we don't pronounce it like berg, okay? We pronounce it like Berg in Swedish. Always when you see the combination RG, you say more like a Y sound, Berg. And if you want to know more about all the Swedish pronunciation rules so that you can sound more Swedish, then I recommend you to take any of our video courses. The one for 100% beginners has all the rules of Swedish pronunciation and it will also teach you the basics so that you can start making your own sentences in Swedish. Check it out, the link is up here and in the description below. Moving on to the different characters and how you pronounce their names in Swedish. We also have August, the second cousin of the prince, played by Malte Myrenberg Gårdinger. Hi, my name is Malte Myrenberg Gårdinger and I play August. He's actually the son of a very famous Swedish TV presenter and model, Pontus Gårdinger. And Malte actually tried out the role of Simon, but he didn't get it. Instead, he became August. And then we have Simon's sister, Sara, played by Frida Argento. In this series, her character, Sara, has Asperger, which is actually the case in real life as well. Her character, Sara, is an hestje, which is a thing here in Sweden. And hestje is a girl who likes horses rides horses and puts a lot of time in horse-related things. We also have Nikita. Hi, I'm Nikita and I play Felice in Young Royal. Did you hear those E sounds from Nikita? Nikita's character, Felice, the one who I said sounds very posh when she talks, belongs in the Syria to the upper class. However, in the Syria they make a difference between nyrika and adliga. Felice belongs to the nyrika, the new rich, which means that they are very rich, but quite recently. She does not come from generations of rich and influential people with connections to the royalty, like August and the other characters that are adliga. So the series don't only talk about working class versus upper class, but also the differences among the group that belongs to the upper class. And this brings us to our next topic, number seven. Inclusiveness. Young royals have won several prizes, among other for choosing actors that are real teenagers with acne or other things that don't match the stereotypical beauty standards that you often see in other TV shows. The series has also a good representation of people from different backgrounds, upper class, working class, immigrant background but also for including characters with Asperger or ADHD or the HOD. And obviously for having a LGBTQ plus representation as part of the main story. Number eight, Swedish words and expressions from young royals. As we mentioned before, watching series and movies in Swedish is a great way to learn a language and to learn how we really speak. I have therefore made a list with expressions and words that you can hear both from the series and in real life, especially by Swedish teenagers and young adults. Number one, snob big, posh. For example, en snobbig skola, a posh school. Två, fett. 
Fat really means fat, but it's normally used, especially as slang, like the word awesome or great. Like in this example. Jag fixar allt inför festen. I will prepare or get everything for the party. Fett. Awesome. Next expression. Vad fan. It really means all devils. But in frustrating situations, it can be kind of translated to the English what the f or damn. Next expression. Det blir askul. This can be translated to the English it will be f great. Really, really fun. Du är grym. This expression can be very confusing because grim, if you translate it literally, it means cruel. But we use it more like awesome, you are awesome, du är grym. When you want to say that someone is really good at something. Polare. Polare can be translated to the English word buddies. And it's kind of slang of the Swedish word kompisar, friends. Our next word is a bit tricky to translate to English since you need to know a lot about Swedish politics. And that word is en susse. This word is used a lot, especially by August, when he talks about people that don't belong to the upper class. When he describes Simon and his friends, but also when he talks about the school's therapist, who kind of looks like a hippie. If you look at the English subtitles for this show, it's translated to socialist, but it doesn't really mean that. But I understand why you can translate like that from an American point of view. En susse, for us, is someone that is a member or who vote for the political party Socialdemokraterna. The Social Democrats, one of the oldest and currently largest political parties in Sweden. Their political position is something like center-left. And perhaps, at least historically, the one that have got the most votes from the working class and middle class in Sweden. So when August uses this word susse, he kind of means it in a negative way to refer to the people that don't belong to the upper class like he does. But just so you know, our word for socialist is not really susse, it's actually socialist. And when August confronts the prince for escaping the boarding school in order to hang out with Simon in Bjerstad, he also uses this word. He kind of asks the prince if he went to a susse safari, which basically means to watch, to see how the middle class or working class behave and act. Another slang word you can hear, especially from Simon's polare, is the word abo or abo, which kind of means wow. You probably also notice a lot of swinglish, like words such as skippa, chilla, and this is because teenagers in Sweden and also young adults love to mix English words when we speak or make a swinglish version of it. So that was my list of some interesting and fun facts about young royals. Do you have any fun fact that you want to share with our fun Swedish community? If you do, write it down in the comment section below. And before you go, don't forget to put a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't done it yet. Hej då!